And um, in 40 years of living Islam and breathing Islam and studying and, and traveling to study with great scholars, I found that this is true, that we can find the answers. But again, we have to take the whole of Islam. We have to take Islam, which is the law. We have to take Islam, which is theology an understanding of God and reality and time and place. And we have to have Ihsan, which is Sufism, real Sufism, not fake Sufism, not phony or fraudulent Sufism, but Sufism that is the real Sufism, like that of Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani. Okay, so when we have this, then we will have the answers and we will have something beautiful. And I believe that if we succeed in this, and I pray that we do succeed in my country, the United States, and in this country, Gambia, which to me is like a second country, that, and in Europe, you know, that we can create a way of life that is so beautiful that the best of people among Americans and Europeans and Chinese and Japanese and Africans and others, they will welcome it. And maybe they will even take part in it. Religious harmony in the world now? Um, I wish we could say yes, but um, re religion, is, religion is not the problem. Um, but religious people are the problem. And religious people may be very sincere, but they have problems with ambition, with pride, with their following. And religious leaders in particular and often religious scholars in particular, they create problems. And sometimes they are the biggest problems. So uh, we have to be very wise and we have to be very honest. And inshallah, may Allah give us success. And may Allah bless Gambia. Gambia, I, I, this is my second time to come to Gambia and I love this country. It's a beautiful country. It's, it is a modest country. It has, I believe, many good qualities, and I pray that God protect it. And I pray that the people of Gambia continue to be upright people, humble people, good people. And um, I think that uh, things may change. God may bless these people, and he may make them a vanguard, people who learn to live Islam in the proper way, in a harmonious way in an enlightened way, and then uh, can uh, be a light for Africa, and inshallah a light for the world, bi-ithnillahi ta'ala. You, you touched on Sufism and uh, the, 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 um, the moral foundation mm -hmm. of society, mm -hmm. but in a, in a capitalist world, greed takes a good part of it. They want to produce more and mm -hmm. then have more and mm -hmm. more and more mm -hmm. and more of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And greed so certainly. Capitalists have great need of Islam. <laughs> they have yeah. great need. Because in the world of economics, in the world of economics, and especially in the world of investment, you know, there are two major sins. Greed and fear. Greed and fear. Those are the two major sins of economics and of investment. And the economic problem that began in 2008, which almost destroyed the banking system, which was a great catastrophe, um, behind this was greed and fear. Greed that amounted to giving loans on the most tenuous, absurd basis and selling loans and selling loans and selling loans so that nobody knows where the loan began or where it ended. And often the people were not able, they didn't know the terms of the loans and they're not able to repay if things don't go well. That's greed. And the banks were involved in that. And the investors were involved in that. And then when the house of cards began to fall, fear. So now they fear they're going to lose their money. So now, for example, the banks don't want to lend. And three years ago, they would lend to almost anybody, although the lending policies were often unwise. So um, the, the person who lives in the world of capital and who makes money, and to make money is part of Islam. You know, al-mal, 
You know, to have money, to have wealth, to be wealthy, this is part of our deen. Although we have to get it right and we have to use it correctly. But, um, you know, people in the world of economy, they need to have values. And we need to have an economic system which is effective, but which is also balanced. And also that is informed by values, human values. The current present capital, capitalist system will give us that. Um, maybe not, but uh, maybe we don't have to be that way. And greed is believed to be a canker worm that eats the very moral foundation of uh, society. And religion seems to be anchored well on moral persecution. Uh, well, well, yeah. We are those, 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 mm -hmm. I mean, Capitalist economic mm. system mm. really undermine religion in the center, not just Islam. Um, uh, um, Fit under mm -hmm. uh, the, the nature of capitalism as it's developed over hundreds of years is that it's always reviewing itself, it's always uh, modifying itself, and of course we as free people, we can also do things in a different way although we have to be very intelligent about that, because a power in the modern world is basically economic power. And therefore, uh, we don't want to do anything that would destroy us economically. You know, we need to be economically strong. Uh, but at the same time, we need to be a vanguard. And uh, in the capitalist system, if it is based on fear and greed, it will destroy itself. As you say, it's a canker, and it will destroy values and everything else, but also it will destroy it's itself. Itself. So Muslims, in my belief, we are the people who, if we are enlightened, and if we truly follow our faith, uh, we can create and we can live in an economic system which is properly developed and modified so that it produces wealth and it makes loans possible and dynamic, and yet it is not based just on fear and greed. And I think that there are many people, for example, in the United States, Warren Buffett, who is uh, the most wealthy American and who's one of the greatest investors in history. Uh, Warren Buffett's a very good man, and war he is a very helpful man. So maybe, who knows, maybe we might be able to work with people like that, because not every capitalist is evil. People like Warren Buffett are very good people. Doctor, we almost get into the end of this interview. Mm -hmm. um, said 40 years ago, mm -hmm. you became a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And since then, you've been a practicing one. And, and not just, at, of course, and a good one. But <laughs> <laughs> um, well really, how much of your time are you spending perhaps outside the US um, on missions of this nature? Mm -hmm. Uh, it depends. Uh, I, I've lived outside the United States for many years, and I came back to the United States uh, 10 years ago, and um, I travel a great deal, and I like to travel, and I learn from travel, uh, because uh, you can learn things wherever you go. Uh, Gambia has a lot to teach me, and I say that honestly. You know, because there are many things in the society which are different. And there are many things here which are very good and very positive. So I learn from coming here. And um, I like to travel. I like to travel. Dr. Gambia is one example of mm -hmm. a country where religious tolerance is a hallmark, really. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in some places, it's not the case. I don't need to go far. Perhaps even Nigeria, mm -hmm. most recently, mm -hmm. Muslims and mm -hmm. Christians mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. at each other's throat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you look at situations of this mm -hmm. nature, mm -hmm. and of course in other places, yeah. inter-Muslim mm -hmm. communal mm -hmm. violence of yeah. this sort. Uh, th this is a great challenge. And uh, when societies begin to decay, and uh, you know, when rivalries and factions grow up in a society, which are political or social or whatever they may be, or economic, uh, one of the most effective ways that a faction can express itself is in religious terms. 
And that is an abuse of religion.